There are so many issues affecting the sustainability of the planet. Many of these problems are caused by our lack of reverence to Mother Earth. Having caused these problems, we can also be part of the solutions. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Sustainability Talks. This is Sheila Argastillo. farm in Alfonso Cavite and we're going to talk about something that's very important. You know, when uh, uh, we had this uh, COVID uh, pandemic, everybody's talking about zoonosis, zoonosis, zoonosis. What is this zoonosis? So we have to understand what zoonosis is for us to understand what the pandemic is about. About three quarters of all infectious diseases originate in animals, some exotic, others from livestock like chickens, even the seemingly cute and cuddly. All could be vectors for highly infectious, potentially deadly, novel virus outbreaks in humans. So first of all, zoonosis is um, also called zoonotic disease, which is actually a disease that comes from animals. Um, that uh, transmits to humans. And uh, the problem with this is that uh, these uh, viruses, uh, this uh, bacteria, whatever it is that causes the zoonosis, um, sometimes don't even harm animals. No? But when it is transmitted to people, then um, the problem happens and we get a lot of these different uh, effects that uh, gives us um, uh, really adverse uh, effects, illness. Sometimes it could even cause death. And uh, one of the best examples of this is the COVID-19 pandemic. Coronavirus is rising by the day. It reported its second case of the disease and the country's first novel coronavirus-related death. There are five ways by which zoonotic diseases are transmitted to humans. First one is uh, uh, indirect contact. So when we are uh, around animals and we touch something that they have touched, uh, they have this zoonotic disease and we contract it, so that's one way. And another way is by dealing directly with animals, so in petting zoos, and going to farms like this, you know, touching an animal that has that disease, then we contract uh, the disease also. Another way is through vector-borne uh, uh, vectors. And so, um, like ticks, uh, fleas, you know, when they bite us, uh, we get these um, different kinds of uh, diseases, bacteria uh, that goes into our body, sometimes uh, parasites that get into our body. And these are also zoonotic diseases. Uh, another uh, very important uh, way by which we contract uh, zoonosis is through food. So this is foodborne diseases. And uh, an example for the, of this is uh, what they say, the COVID-19 uh, virus. And uh, they said, uh, experts are saying that initially it was like coming from a bat or either a bat or a pangolin from the Wuhan market and, uh, and that these are prepared into food. No? So that's why uh, people in Wuhan contracted the virus and it's transmitted to humans and transmitted from humans to humans to surfaces. And now they're saying, uh, the WHO is saying it's uh, airborne. No? And so another way is uh, waterborne. So if we are contaminated, if our water is contaminated or the food we eat is contaminated by water, that is contaminated by the feces of a, a sick animal, then we get to contract uh, the zoonotic diseases. So there are many kinds of these zoonotic diseases. One of which that you read on the news now is the ASF, the African Swine Flu. Aside from the uh, COVID pandemic, um, this is uh, one thing that is bothering us right now. Like the MERS, the SARS, these are all zoonotic diseases.
So zoonotic diseases affect us in different ways. So if you're healthy, you're not so much affected, you could also be asymptomatic for zoonotic disease. Sometimes people with uh, what we call comorbidities, people who are, have uh, chronic diseases, uh, who have cancers, who have, um, you know, uh, asthma or respiratory illnesses, they are really susceptible to this uh, zoonotic diseases and uh, the problem is that uh, it could also really uh, impact their health and even cause death. As you know, uh, the COVID pandemic has been killing hundreds of thousands of people uh, globally and in the Philippines we are experiencing this in such a huge uh, impact that it really affected not just our health but also our uh, livelihood, you know, the economy, uh, how people uh, live their lives and how we work. This is totally stopping everything in its tracks and it has completely changed the way we live. You might think, ah, COVID-19, maybe that's just one pandemic and it will not happen again. If we are vaccinated, then everything's okay. But you know what? Dr. Fauci of the CDC in the USA said that we are entering a pandemic era. Which means that this is not the very first and last that we will be experiencing in our lifetime. And uh, because of this, we have to know how we could really, really uh, prevent uh, more of these pandemics from happening. So how can we stop the spread of zoonotic diseases? So first of all, we have to take care of ourselves, no? Um, the way that we are taking care of ourselves when we are uh, in a pandemic era like this, uh, COVID-19, the usual things that we need to do, we need to really wash our hands and we make sure that uh, uh, we do the social distancing. Uh, we have to make sure that we always use, um, you know, to di uh, disinfect our hands and disinfect the surfaces that we always touch. And uh, that is just one thing. But another thing that we should look at is um, a way by which we start to eliminate um, contact with animals, especially those animals that are in really uh, congested areas where they are uh, farmed uh, like uh, in uh, really huge poultry farms, live livestock farms. Um, the more that they are dense, now, the more that they are concentrated together, the more possibility for zoonotic diseases to come out. And uh, that's one thing. Another thing is that when we are destroying the forest, the viruses and bacteria that are there that did not usually uh, affect humans are already affecting us. No? And uh, so we have to make sure that the, these habitats are protected, make sure that these viruses do not uh, transmit uh, to humans. And another thing is that we have to change our diet. Really, that's something that is a no-brainer for now. And we have seen in uh, the COVID pandemic that the uh, uh, this zoonosis came from animals which uh, are, you know, produced as food. These are wild animals that are caught for food in Wuhan. So, um, because they are not in their habitats and they have this um, viruses that are not harmful to them as animals once transmitted to us and then it makes us sick and so we really need to rethink our diet we really need to rethink how we treat the environment how we uh, protect the forest and how we make sure that the animals are you know able to live their lives as they are and not uh, treated as food um, like we do affected by what happened in this pandemic and you're thinking maybe of course I don't want this to happen anymore I don't want this to happen to my family I don't want this to happen to my country I cannot go out I cannot work outside I cannot even meet my friends and uh, if we really want this to uh, not happen anymore we have to really radically think rethink our lives and uh, if we go on uh, 
doing the things that we used to do. We cannot solve the problem in the same way that the problem was created in the first place. That was paraphrasing Albert Einstein. So we have to really make sure that we make the changes that are needed. So minimize eating meat, um, minimize uh, extraction of resources from the forest, protect the forest, protect the ecosystems. Um, animals are sentient beings and we, not, we should not eat them. Especially if they are in the wild, they should be in the wild. And uh, if we continue to do these things, uh, we can expect that this is not the last pandemic that we will be experiencing. Do you want that, that to happen? So this is a challenge to all of us. And uh, if uh, we have uh, the moment to reflect on what's going on, then this is something that we really need to think about. By educating ourselves and practicing what we learn, we can prevent zoonosis and pandemics. Do your part to stop COVID-19 and other zoonosis. Together, we can make it happen. This is Sheila Arcastillo for Sustainability Talks.